HD Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hi, Why Not Mint Money is a daily podcast on personal finance that helps you get smart about managing money. We help you understand basic money concepts to keep you from making bad money mistakes. Why Not Mint Money is your one-stop solution to money matters. So, let's get started. Welcome to your money journey. Hello and welcome to Why Not Mint Money. This is Neil Borati from the Mint Money team. Yesterday, 28th of December, India's oldest exchange-traded fund or ETF completed 20 years of its existence. This ETF is the Nippon India Nifty Bs which tracks the Nifty 50 index and it has given an annualized return of almost 16% 16 since its inception. Now this fund has a rather interesting history not only uh, in itself but also because of what it tells you about ETFs. So this fund was originally launched as part of a fund house called Benchmark Mutual Fund in 2001 um along the road in uh, 2011 it got acquired by Goldman Sachs which had set up a mutual fund in India a little further along the road in 2015 it got acquired by Reliance Mutual Fund uh, which was part of the Anil Dhirubhai Ambani group the ADAG group that Reliance Mutual Fund later became reliance nippon mutual fund because nippon life of japan took a small stake in it and eventually it became nippon india mutual fund when reliance capital exited so despite these four changes in the amc managing this etf not much damage has been done in terms of performance usually when a fund manager leaves a fund there is a chance of performance going down or if the new fund manager is really good then performance perhaps even going up but the beauty of etfs is that that doesn't matter etfs track an index and the role of the fund manager is pretty minimal incidentally though uh, despite all the changes in uh, the amc the actual fund manager uh, vishal jain has remained constant since it was it was launched uh, which is an amazingly long tenure of 20 years vishal jain is only just moving on he is put in his papers with nippon mutual fund but again given that it is an etf it really shouldn't matter the other important things to uh, note about this etf uh, are first it's extremely low expense ratio that's 0.05% uh, the aum which is slightly north of 5000 crores it has now um, a reasonably good volume so this matters uh, because etfs are bought and sold on stock exchanges and there being enough liquidity enough volume um, means that you can transact more easily uh, otherwise uh, you end up either not being able to transact or you transact at prices that are very very different from the nav the the underlying value of the etf so something uh, to take note of um, and indeed it's a sign of the etf and passive funds market maturing in india as well now to shed some light on who etfs are meant for and whether there are any particular segments where etfs work better than active funds we have amol joshi who is founder of plan rupee investment services Hi Amol. So um, one of the questions that came to my mind while looking at this ETF is who uh, ETFs are for. So Warren Buffett very famously is said to have told his wife that after I die, please invest the money in an S&P 500 ETF uh, instead of trying to pick stocks. So in terms of an investor segment, really who who is ETF meant for? 
All right, uh, Neil. Hi. I think the quote that you mentioned just now that itself covers it. So ETFs are for somebody who are long-term bullish on a particular market. We have seen that any given uh, equity, be it in India or overseas records, over a long period of time, equity has demonstrated its ability to beat the inflation and then some. So the idea behind equity investment itself is you should get more bang for your buck. especially looked at from the inflation angle now after having said that there is not one or 10 or 100 stocks that are listed there are thousands of stocks listed even in india and obviously in other developed markets suffice to say that etf which is a passively managed fund that mimics a particular index is suitable for an investor who is long term bullish on equity at the same time who does not want to kind of hazard a guess as to out of given hundreds or thousands of stocks which are the 30 or 50 stocks that i should buy there is an index that does exactly the same job i'm not saying index is constructed uh, of 30 or 50 companies that will do the best but index is definitely constructed uh, if you are talk if you talk about the large cap stocks on certain parameters like uh, uh, the the promoters holding uh, like the market capitalization so on and so forth so if you do not want to if you want to participate in equity number 1 do not want to uh, kind of uh, do the stock picking yourself number 2 and do all of this it at much lower cost etfs have one of the lowest expense ratio products in the mutual fund if you are somebody who wants all these three things i think etfs are for you right amol um, are there particular segments of the market uh, such as large or mid or small uh, where ETFs work best in particular uh, the spiva reports uh, which which compare active funds versus indices seem to indicate that there is a greater space for passive in the large cap segment but would you agree with that right okay yes the spiva report that you mentioned over last few iterations of the report has kind of uh, given us this indication that in large cap the outperformance is kind of difficult and see this is also very well known that larger the company better is the coverage or uh, dozens if not hundreds of research houses uh, will cover the company and most of the face uh, uh, faces of the investments of the company do get uncovered uh, when there is a research coverage with fine tooth comb now the same thing uh, Does not necessarily apply on mid caps and small caps, and that's the very same reason uh, why this PIVA report, as well as one of the AMC's, also has re- uh, 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 released a report uh, maybe in last uh, couple of months, where mid caps and small cap actively managed funds have demonstrated outperformance. Larger number of funds, larger percentage of funds have demonstrated outperformance over the passive indices in the mid cap small cap space. So I would say ETFs or index funds would probably work best in a large cap segment in mid cap and small caps there is still a value that fund manager can add which over a period of time does better even taken into cons- even after taking into consideration the higher expense ratios compared to passively managed funds so for large caps for certain percentage allocation of your large cap portfolio i think etfs or index funds will be a suitable fit okay thank you so much amol always a pleasure neil thanks for having me great so there you have it folks um ETFs are essentially meant for people who don't want to get into the business of active stock picking and they work best in the large cap segment. Thank you very much for listening and have a very very happy new year. Thank you all. Thanks for listening in. We're also available on livemin.com and if you're old school then do pick up a copy of Mint for some insightful coverage. If you have any questions you want us to address, do reach us out at HT Smartcast. We are present on Twitter, Facebook and Insta. And if you want to connect over email, write in to us at mintmoney@livemin.com. Until next time, it's bye-bye. This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.